Hi there. Welcome to this short presentation detailing my attempt to get the old Revel 30 second scale Curtis P40 up to something like modern standards. The kits were released in the UK in 1969 and heralded the start of the first ever series of aircraft kits in 132nd. Releases were regular throughout the 1970s until the early 1980s when recession struck and new releases dried up with most of the older ones disappearing from the market. There were about 30 kits produced in the end, many of which were reboxed in various guises over the years. So, by way of a tribute to this classic series, I decided to build the original issue of the Curtis P40E, the Flying Tiger. The first thing I noticed when the kit arrived was how incredibly small the box was. The problem with this is that several parts, and in particular the fuselage halves, were quite badly warped. I also noticed that while the box, decals and instructions were the originals, the kit almost certainly was not. A later issue had been put into an early box. This is something to beware of if you like to buy to collect. I always check the contents as well as the box. Not really a problem in this case though, as I intended to build the kit anyway. Building starts with the Allison engine, and this is really quite good. It's slightly undersized, but the general shape is accurate, and the level of detail is better than I expected. Using a few photos as a guide, I added some extra bits, most significantly the ignition harness and plug leads from brass and plastic tubing and brass wire, but the finished unit is still essentially the kit item. The cockpit interior comes next, and this is a bit more of a challenge. The seat, control column, rudder pedals and instrument panel are all inaccurate. The sidewall detail is on the right lines, but very crudely moulded by today's standards. The main problem though are the large gaps left round the cockpit floor that allow a sort of see-through effect into the wheel bays and engine compartment. The instrument panel had the raised details removed, a printed paper insert stuck on in their place and a thin plastic card panel, suitably shaped and punched with the correct holes, put on top of that. The top of the panel was also reshaped, as was the gun sight, which is way too big. The seat is the wrong shape, but the plastic's thick enough for it to be partially corrected by some cutting and sanding. I also added some Edouard etched metal seat belts. The control column was beyond redemption though, so I had to resort to scratch building here. The rudder pedals themselves were usable after some refinement. Once the cockpit and engine assemblies were both added to the fuselage, the whole thing didn't look too bad. However, mating the two fuselage halves together wasn't easy. This was partly due to the fact the fit wasn't terrific anyway, but more to the warping that had taken place after so many years stored in a box that was too small. I worked in sections, starting from the tail, using liquid glue and plenty of setting time, and working on two or three inches at a time. The wing assembly comes next, together with some more problems. The one-piece lower wing was another component to have suffered from being packed into too small a box, and had developed a marked anhedral. The retractable undercarriage was not quite the accuracy catastrophe I expected and the main wheel legs are quite good, but the wheels themselves are awful, looking like glossy donuts. So I bowed to temptation and invested in some beautifully produced Edouard resin replacements. More careful boxing in is required, this time of the wheel wells, and I also added some basic detail while I was at it. You can also see the corrective work that was done on the elevators also necessary on the rudder. Fitting the completed wing assembly to the fuselage was the next hurdle. The underside mates up with the fuselage quite well, but the wing root join is poor. The gap is so big that plastic card shims need to be glued in first before any filler is used. An awful lot of sanding, priming, refilling and more sanding is required, but at least all that glued shim means there's a nice strong joint. Better news comes with the tailplane and rudder, where the fit is much better. 
Another modelling first for me. I used a commercial masking kit. This was from Montex, who seemed to do a lot of these, and to my surprise they produced one for the Revel kit as well as the Hasegawa. Not many kits as old as this one have aftermarket items made specially for them. Unfortunately, the markings I preferred were in the Hasegawa set, not for the Revel, so I had to buy both. Somebody's law, I believe. Now for the painting. The scheme was fairly simple, but even so, it did require several hours of masking. I tend to work from the lighter colours to the dark, so the white areas were sprayed first, which was Humbrol Mat 34, then the neutral grey undersides, Humbrol Mat 64, the dark earth upper surfaces, Mat 29, and finally the dark green, Mat 30. I'm not a stickler for the absolute accuracy of shades of colour, but these looked a near enough match to me. Now for a bit more of the masking kit. The four stars of the National Insignia come in two different sizes, but the difference between them is small and easily missed. There are no instructions about this, which doesn't help. I used the larger ones for the wings and the smaller ones on the fuselage sides, although this was only guesswork. Obviously, you need to get the positioning just right first time, as the slide into place option doesn't exist. I originally intended to build the kit using as few aftermarket products as possible in order to keep the character of the old thing. However, as you've seen, I came across certain things that were just too good to pass by. Both the Eduard and Master Model products shown here, I have to say, really did enhance the appearance of the finished model. The excellent resin wheels help bring the kit into the 21st century and little modification is required to get them to fit onto the reasonably good kit representations of the undercarriage legs. A representation of the hydraulic brake cable was also added to each leg. The replacement main wheel doors are another worthwhile improvement. The kit items are awful, with massive hinges in order to make them work and large slots for these hinges to fit into on the edge of the wheelbase that need filling and sanding before the replacements can be used. The master model 0.5 inch gun barrels are good. I coloured them with AK's brass photo burnishing fluid. This worked well, leaving a convincing gunmetal finish and rendering any painting unnecessary. I used it with the ring and bead sights too. These items are great, but they need to be positioned with care. The instructions are good on how to do this. The nose art cartoon monkey that fits in between the lettering is provided as a water slide decal and was left off until the model had been varnished. The final bit of masking was necessary on the spinner. It has a white band around it and I'm surprised the mask wasn't provided for this in the Montex set. As it is, you're left with a rather fiddly DIY job. Weathering was pretty minimal. There's a bit of post shading on the main colours, particularly the white. Some streaks and smudges were added using weathering powders and the root area was gently sanded down to the alclad coating underneath. Some scratching and chipping on the propeller and spinner was also done to reveal the alclad pre-sprayed underneath. Very gentle sanding with 1200 grade paper and then with polishing cloths helped break up the evenness of the surface finish. The model was finally coated with a light overall coat of well-thinned 50-50 mix of gloss coat and matte coat, Humbrol of course. The good thing about this project for me was although I was building an old kit, I was still able to use new products and try things for the first time. In this case, the use of paint masks for more than just canopies was a valuable new experience. I wanted to build the model as far as possible in its original state. And though I added more in the way of extras than originally intended, I still feel I managed to keep enough of the original character of the model. I hope you agree. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you found this useful. I look forward to you joining me again sometime in the future.